No matter how dark things seem to be Jeremiah 33.3 says, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and I will show thee great and mighty things thou knowest not. Join us now to hear great and mighty things that have happened in the lives of people who have been changed through our Lord Jesus as they share their testimonies of how God answers prayer. Welcome to God Answers Prayer. Today is the day that the Lord has made we should be rejoicing and be glad in it. And no, no matter where you are in your day, don't let things get you down. Just begin to rejoice. And you know, when we start rejoicing, then we're glad. And then things begin to change. In Proverbs chapter 16, verse 3, before you do anything, put your trust totally in Yahweh and not in yourself. Then every plan you make will succeed. Have you set goals and feel like they just go nowhere? Frustration sets in and starts to lead you down a path of feeling it's just the same old, same old. Well, that's exactly what our guest, Roseanne Roberts Archuleta, experienced. We're about to hear how trusting the Word of Yah, that the word I just read, changed her path. We'll be back with Roseanne right after this. Time ago, there was a perfect man. He loved the people of every land. He brought his everlasting love far from the heavens high above. His endless love stays with us still. We can be sure it always will his love shines through in every place comfort all the human race his love he gives like cleansing rain to wash away our hurt and pain he brings his love inside each soul there's nothing His love This man who clothes the lilies white Loves us every day and night Each tiny sparrow he cares for Then to us he gives much more His love He gives Like cleansing rain To wash away Our hurt and pain He brings His love Inside each soul There's nothing better Not even gold How empty would This whole life be Oh 
His great love. His love. Well, welcome back. As promised, we're I'm here with Roseanne Archuleta. It's good to have you back. Oh, I'm so happy to be here, uh, Linda. Thank I, you. I I know um, that we had met up. Met, we met up, and you were getting ready to write a chapter for a book. Yes. And um, and now this book has come out, Broken Chapters. Yes, by Krista and, Dunk. Yeah, and you have a chapter in there. Yes, I do. So you know, let, let's just let's go back and and start about your testimony about how this even came about. Oh my goodness, what a story, God moving in my life. Krista Dunk is someone that was introduced to me by my sister in New York. What my sister was doing was she was working on a book on 529 plans, okay, fine, financial. Uh -huh. And Krista, who lives in Washington State, was her editor. And my sister and Krista had this wonderful relationship. And um, when Phil and I started working on finishing our last mar marker book, we write uh -huh. historical marker books, I said, I'm going to reach out to Krista and see if she'll help with the editing. So I did. Little did I know that she was this beautiful light in the world, producing all kinds of Christian books as well as other kind of books. And we had this wonderful experience together over several months. And then toward the end of us finishing, she said to me on the phone one day, you know, I'm working on a book, which is a compilation of people's stories about how they've gone through really tough stuff in their life and how Jesus and God turned it all around when they turned it over to them. And she said, I don't know. I know you just finished this one book. If, I don't know if you would do this, but I have one more opening for one more author to do one. And I just was um, inspired to ask you if you wanted to do one. Now, me, you know, Linda, I had just finished that book. Phil and I are always working on all these projects. <laughs> it's the last thing I wanted to do was another project back right. to back. Yeah. And I said, look, if you're asking me right now, I'd have to say no, because intellectually, I can't do it. However, if you give me time, a couple of days to pray about it and just really, you know, consider and also consider what I would put in the story because I've gone through a lot of different things in my life as most of us have. So she said, no, fine, give yourself a couple days. So I did, I got out from under my, behind my desk, went outside, it was February, it was really cold, and I walked really fast and I said, okay, I don't really wanna do this intellectually, but if you want me to do this, it was my prayer and walk, you need to first of all, tell me to do it, and second of all, what am I doing it on? Mm -hmm. And so I'm walking fast, walking fast. Clear as a bell. If you're doing it, you'll do it on the most difficult part of your life. The thing that's been the backdrop of your life forever, which has been my issues with my body, mm -hmm. my battle with my body. So anyway, to make a long story short, Phil came home from work and I told him what Krista had offered. And I said, I'm still praying about it. I still haven't decided. And he said, Oh, you've got to do it. What a beautiful opportunity to share your testimony mm -hmm. and also to, you know, to be part of something really wonderful. And I woke up that morning knowing I was to do it and I called her to do it. Awesome. So let's let's just start about, you know, your journey. <clears throat> I mean, I, I know it's in the book. But uh, as but there's also a whole lot of other testimonies in there too. <laughs> yes. But <clears throat> I think this is an issue that most of us as women go through. Oh. You know, um, yes. we came through a we grew up in a time when all of a sudden, you know, we're bombarded with images and magazines uh, on TV and the movies that this is the way a woman needs to look. Yes. And we start comparing ourselves. Yes. Well, and I want to let everyone know what's happened from writing this. And I'll go back to the beginning mm -hmm. of, of the story in a moment. I have chosen to make a complete book out of the story. Oh, good. Yes. And my goal is it'll be um, published the first quarter of 2024. Please help me. <laughs> anyway, books don't write themselves, as you know. So, however, how this 
start. My father had a weight issue. And I mean, he really did. He would fluctuate weight. He had like three sizes of clothes in his closet all the time. So what happens when someone has the issue, love and concern, I'm three years old and I'm a little pudgy. I don't know, we don't have to wonder why, but I was. And so he immediately turned his attention on that out of fear that I would go through what he went through, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So there you are. So um, he, he demanded, and in our family, he was um, the boss. My mother didn't have a say in this because she didn't agree to this. I want people to know this. He wanted me to immediately get on a doctor's diet. So I started going to a pediatrician at three years old uh, related to my weight. Now, here's the problem. Well, that was a problem all by itself because so much attention. Uh, I saved my book, and this article even, is for parents too that have children that have um, the tendency to overeat or whatever. So, but anyway, all this shining light was on me. My mother, who disagreed with this whole dieting thing at that sweet young age, we would go to the pediatrician every other week. I'd get weighed. And then if I gained weight or lost weight, it didn't matter either way, because I stuck on this diet, she would take me to the drugstore for a milkshake and a cheeseburger. <laughs> we laugh. Yeah, yeah. Do you know how many hours of therapy I've done on my body issues <laughs> and how the minute a psychologist hears that story, it's imprinted in your being at three years old yeah. that you're celebrating with food or if you're depressed, you're eating. Yeah. Right? Yeah, right. So that's how the journey started. And, um, and then going along, you know, always, you know, we call, I call the article and I will call the book, I Just Wanted to Dance, mm -hmm. because I'm telling you, God imprinted me with this really sweet nature that was very joyful and music just made me so happy. So, you know, I was in ballet and tap when I was like five still noticing the chubby thighs that I had compared to the other children. Mm -hmm. I never couldn't see these things. Yeah. Once in a while in choreographed dance, I could just almost shut my eyes and forget about it. Um, and then it just progressed and progressed. When I was 12 years old, oh no, let's talk about communion because we were raised Catholic and I loved Jesus and the idea of first communion was just Oh, I was so excited to do this. And it was a big deal because mom had to take me to the plus size communion dress place. Everybody's focused on that. I loved my dress. I didn't care what size it was, honestly. But then right before, there's a lot of humor in this. It's not all victimization. Yeah. And you can tell I've lived, a, I'm living a great life. And so it didn't throw me in despair overall. However, go back to the First Communion, I get the mumps right before First Communion. You know what this does. <laughs> yeah. My mother is horrified. So t the taking of the headshots and how she's talking to the photographer so I don't look so fat. Oh no. And all I wanted was to commune with Jesus. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Right. So that sweet little girl. Anyway, and as the story continues, 12 years old, Diet pills became popular. Mm. I don't know if you remember, uh, we're somewhat peers. And anyway, my father was on them, you know, amphetamines, diet pills. Mm. And he asked our doctor, what about me, 12 years old? Could I take them? And um, he said, I'm having some success with teenagers. I mean, they had no consciousness around amphetamines in a 12 year old and what it would do to your body. Yeah. And no, I was thrilled to get them because there was so much focus on my weight that if there was a pill I could take yeah. that would release it. Anyway, so that was all part of this journey, which that set off a whole bad string of events. But it just went on and on. And then finally, what brought this all to a head was ultimately, because I've gotten used to being me over time. And then I met Phil, my husband. I, some people. I mean, you don't realize this, most people. I got married at 54 years old mm. to a man who really loves me unconditionally. And I thought that was my answer. But it's not. If you've got the issue, the compulsivity around food and exercise and all this, 
it's you. It, no one can fix it. God can fix it. Jesus mm -hmm. can fix it. Right. But no human can fix it. Right. So anyway, the end of the story is when I saw Phil couldn't really help me, um, I was more, you know, what am I going to do? I almost gave up. And then COVID happened to me twice. And when it happened to me twice, first time I had 10 blood clots hospitalized. Mm. Second time, major um, uh, pneumonia hospitalized. On oxygen, walking, picture me walking around the house with an oxygen tank for two months. Mm. Picture me. Wow. Awful. And that's what smacked me in the head. Forget about beauty. Forget about image. Forget about fitting in. You are now 67 years old and you are going to be ill the rest of your life. More pharmaceutical drugs, you have got to get your health together and that means your body and losing right. weight. So that's what did it. That was the day, I mean, it was a couple months later where I finally, you'll read it in the chapter and then in the book, in despair, I just, I thought I had turned it over so many times before and I probably did and then took it back. You know how we do with God. Right. But I turned it over and I just said, you have got to help me because I will not be this crippled old lady because of something I could change within myself. Help me. So that's the journey. Wow. So at 67, you begin the journey. To begin the journey. And God is good. What ended up happening, and I do want to preface this by saying, I probably could have gotten here with a many different food programs I had been on. I believe that. Yeah. However, it was the surrender, and then I, was on, I found this other food program. That combination is really what's driving this now. So what happened was I was, you know, surrendered, praying, starting to just hear more of the Holy Spirit's voice when I was in the kitchen. This is how it kind of started. And then out of the blue, a colleague of mine from years ago reaches out and I said, wow, he's in a, I do consulting, he's in a position to hire me as a consultant. I wasn't thinking about God or anything, I was thinking about business. So um, I reached out to him, we had a conversation and he told me what he was doing, I told him what my business was. And before we hung up the phone, he said, may I share something personal with you? which I had no clue what he was going to say. We didn't have a relationship like that. Uh -huh. And he said, I have just lost 100 pounds. And for the first time, I'm this close to getting off insulin. First time in 27 years. Wow. And I sat there and I said, OK. Now, I felt that was a God. That uh -huh. was so weird and out of nowhere, right? We know yeah. what God looks like. And so I said, OK, you've got to tell me what you are doing. So in his case, and I am, I'm not testimonial, I'm not giving a testimony for the program. Right. I do want the people to know what it is just because I want them to know what it is. Um, it's called better B E T R health. And what he told me was his wife who is employed somewhere, their workplace offered Weight Watchers, Noom, both things I've done, you name a program, I've done it. And I love them both. Like I say, I could have been where I am now, probably on either of these. Uh, and then Better Health were the th three programs they offered. So the fact that he had so much weight loss and the insulin issue right. resolving, mm -hmm. and his wife's workplace was paying for Better Health if they, you know, if you wanted to use it, I felt like they had done due diligence. I looked into it. So what it is, what the heck is it? It is anti-inflammatory diet, meaning mm, yeah. no gluten, no processed foods. Um, we're doing a lot of juicing and stuff. It's good, healthy eating. Sure. You know, I, like I say, I know I could have done this many moons ago. This is the Holy Spirit walking with me on this journey. You know, God's mercy takes us through our youth <laughs> with, yeah. with all these bad patterns that you know th that we've picked up along the way uh, if you don't grow up in a home where nutrition is the thing you know because I, re I remember growing up I mean before my mother went to work 
we always had fresh, you know, cooked meals and things out of the garden. But when she went, went to back to work, all of a sudden things came out of cans and boxes. And, you know, unfortunately, a lot of people do that, but they're, they're laden with chemicals and all kinds of things that are really not good for us. So, so you know, fast forward and you're in your 50s or your 60s and all of a sudden, yeah, it's, it's a whole different story about how your health just starts going yeah, down yeah. and going down. So I, um, I will say, having been through so many different programs over the years, I, you know, this, like I say, I just know this is just because I've turned it over to God. You know, I, I would like to share this one thing because in Broken Chapters, they, there is a woman who's bulimic. So, the, you know, that means she's throwing up the food. Okay, yeah. great. So, not great, but yes, uh, we're the two. There's all kinds of other stories in here. My goodness, you've got to get the book. Uh, we can talk more about that. But I went to what is a 12-step program when I lived in San Francisco, Overeaters Anonymous. So that one has a spiritual part because they believe in the higher power. So that was good. And I would go to the meetings and... Um, I lived in the marina in San Francisco, which was where the, you know, it was the kids that, um, a lot of high-end, beautiful, the beautiful people, nice cars and all that. I, I rented there for many years. Anyway, I'd see these women, glamorous, gorgeous, gorgeous hus uh, boyfriends and such. I go to Overeaters Anonymous, guess who's there with me? They're anorexic, they're bulimic, these girls. And I sat there and I mean, I know you're gonna have listeners that have this issue and God bless you with this issue. I just sat there and said to myself, no one can escape this man. I'm wearing it on my body, but these girls are doing all the, they're tortured within their souls. Right. So, right. you know, it's not just overweight, it's anyone that's having an issue with, um, with the food, the compulsivity around food. And isn't that just like the enemy of our souls? It to is. To try to destroy what God created, the image of what, who He created us to be. Yes. And to make us feel less than and always striving. Um, and then, you know, then, they, then uh, you know, they offer these other things out on the platter. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a mess. So, I know. yeah. Well, Our body I, just wants to be at peace. It does. That's what, I've, you know, I really know a lot more now because I'm listening to what the whispers in my ear, and it's true. I have a voice that will say to me, you know, those foods are there. They don't have anything to do with you right now. You know what's good for your body, and it feels so different. I don't have the cravings that I had. They're gone. Yeah. Now that's lifted by the Holy Spirit. It's also this eating that is just, it feels like nutrition that's medicine going into my being. Absolutely. Yes. The things that he created. Yes. Yeah. Um, I, I know that there are some of you watching today and this is really hitting home. And if you need someone to pray with you, please call us. It's our delight, it's an honor to be able to pray with you. The number is 505-345-4165. And we're gonna pray the word with you, over you, and encourage you. So don't, don't just shrink back, don't think that, no, I gotta go it alone. No, you don't, that's the worst thing you can do, is try to go it alone. We need each other, and more than that, we need Him. So give us a call, we'll be right back. Well, welcome back. We're here with Roseanne, and uh, again, we were just talking about this uh, this book, the Broken Chapters, that um, has been written, and she has a chapter in here. She's one of the chapters, and there are a number of chapters in here, and there's actually a couple of men, right? A couple of men, and and they're not all about food issues or no. body, but. 
it runs from, I mean, depression, divorces, a couple yeah. people who've gone through abortions mm -hmm. that had to get through that, you know, the trauma of that. Um, just all kinds of things, abuse, yeah. that throw people into despair, and then how Jesus took them along to a different life. That's why it's called Broken Chapters. I want you to know that she, the book is dedicated, the book is written by Krista Donk, and uh -huh. please research her. She's written about 20 books now, yeah. most of them based, um, Christian based. Anyway, the book is dedicated, it says, this book is dedicated to the Lord, the master author, and to all those who need to know he can rewrite write their broken chapters too. Wow. And today you're here because I really believe that the Lord wants to use you because he's encouraged you. He's, he's brought healing to you and, and it's available, but there's so many, and I'm kind of majoring on what your issue was, but it, it's a huge issue with women yes. and with men yes. and the enemy of our souls. You know, God created us in his image, he says, and his image looks, depending on where you're standing, you know, it, you, you're going to see such a variety of different images and they're all glorious to him. Yes. Well, and I'm very interested in this. Um, first of all, walking the way, the rest of the way through this. I've got it like another 20 plus pounds to go, not feeling rushed. Yeah. Feel, you know, I just had rotator cuff surgery, oh, yeah, which I'm in a right. major recovery. Yeah. Not rushed, just knowing I'm eating exactly correctly for my body and it will all, and it's dissolving, it's coming off. So I'm not looking at the scale and worrying about this. Very different. Yeah. Always would have a timetable, but this is what it feels like walking the way this experience with the Holy Spirit right now. But what I was going to say is I'm very interested because I am a coach. Uh -huh. I, I, you know, I do dream coaching. I do skilled coaching, but I'm interested in those people like myself that their body image has limited them and they haven't lived the life um, that they could have lived. You know, Krista writes a book, I forget what it's called, but it's based on Jesus has implanted or um, given an impression of what your life could look like and what your gifts are. And if your body image is holding you back from bringing your light forward, that's what I'm interested in, helping people overcome that so they can really live their brilliance and give their gifts. And, and you know, and a lot of times, um, we, we build fences around a hurt. We just keep, keep building layers and, and that manifests in our body. Yes, it does. And in the way we look a lot of times, it's like hiding behind that because there yes. are issues that have not been dealt with. There was something so painful that happened that it, it's hard to reach into. So uh, is that the type of coaching that you work with people on? Well, and also to, I believe they, if it's really deep, they need therapists because I'm not a therapist, yeah. but in consort with the therapist, yeah. what are the things they want to bring forward? And then I would help to move them forward. Ah, because okay. I tell you, for me, because I've had the issue since uh -huh. I was three years old, um, I have had to overstep it. I had to, sometimes with a therapist, sometimes with friends, ministers, mm -hmm. walking with me to let my light shine and, and actually accept opportunities to do things. When my inhibited, low self-esteem, poor body image self didn't want to go. Yeah. So I've had this back and forth and I know that feeling so intimately that I feel I'm, I'm absolutely qualified to help people through that. And you know, if somebody read your bio of what all the things you've done. Yeah, I've done a lot. Uh, you know? Yeah. See, your face just broke into this huge glow. <laughs> well, you know what's been so exciting working on the book, I go back through, I'm doing it decade by decade uh -huh. and the different, you know, experiences and what exercises I was doing, what food, you know, just decade by decade, but seeing all my accomplishments in spite of this drumbeat of you're not good enough, you don't look good enough, look at the other ones doing this, they're so much, they're thin and they're this and they're that. I've had to do everything with that as my backdrop. And yet, 
there are others that when they hear about you and hear what all you've done with your life, they're like, wow, you know, that's amazing. They don't, they don't see any of that. They don't see any of that. They don't see any of that. You know, it's been interesting. A lot of my high school girlfriends have read the book and read my chapter, and they are all saying the same thing. They didn't know. They only saw my light. Yeah. You know, just everybody's saying that kind of thing. It's been so healing oh, good. to hear that. Yeah. I mean, just writing the book and seeing that little girl that just, I love the title. I just wanted to dance. I'm in love with her. And so for those among us that want to break free, that's what I'm interested in. Yeah. And then what are we going to do to get you to what really God has inspired you to do and you haven't allowed yourself? That's what I'm interested in. You know, it's so interesting. Uh, I just wanted to dance. I just wanted and, to and, dance. And, you know, and I, it's, and, and your parents allowed you, you know, they, yes. you were encouraged yes. to do that. And, I mean, I have a, a family member, I think, that, that could so relate to that, you know, because that's all she wanted to do. She just wanted to dance. Just leave me You be. know, just to be a little girl and, and um, you know, and just grow into who God created you to be. That's what we're talking about. You know, I hope, I mean, my, and I'm asking everybody who's reading parts of the book now, um, I, it cannot sound like this big victimization situation where my parents created this. No, that's not what happened here. My father was trying to protect me. Uh -huh. My mother didn't know what to do. And together, I somehow burst through it all anyway. I mean, mm -hmm. really, yeah. I say that's God. And that's, yes. as we grew up, I think I told you this when we were on television before with Phil, um, we were raised in a Catholic home where my mother would have us pray every night before bed in each other's bedrooms and Jesus knelt with us. Oh. And so no matter what, I've always felt like Jesus was my brother, which, you know, thank God, because in the worst of times, I felt like Jesus was was with me. So to be able to say, I have this smile in my soul, uh -huh. people have said that about me. I believe that to be true. That came from that, that early relationship. Yeah. And so no matter how this has been and how I've had to work to overcome that drumbeat, I have overcome the drumbeat. I think about the scripture that says, he whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Isn't that something? I'm telling you. <laughs> oh. and, and that freedom is available to everyone. Yes. To everyone. Yes. Please so, don't give up. That's one of my major messages here, Linda. Mm -hmm. Do not give up. I never gave up on this. Never. Yeah. Wow. So she talks about God, God rewriting your life story. So who, who are the people? Uh, what, the, who's the audience for this book? Okay, so for Krista's book, The Broken Chapters, it's anyone who is seeking inspiration right now because we've got 21 authors, all of which have been through very difficult things in their life. Very, you know, I read it and I say, you think I had an issue, which I did. I'm, I'm going to own it that I belong in the book. Um, <laughs> however, all different kinds of difficult situations from drug addiction, alcohol addiction, of course. I told you there was a bulimic in there. Mm -hmm. uh, the abortion issues, bad marriages, abuse, all of that, and how they turned it over finally and everything changed. And you know, literally called 21 Testimonies of How God Rewrites Our Life Stories. Right. So I think it belongs everywhere including churches. I've even thought about doing some work in, in churches with this book. Um, we've got so many things going on right now. I haven't looked at that. I've yeah. got to, I want to get my book done too. But the, it just belongs everywhere. You might want to buy it for your church though, yeah. certainly. And again, Krista Dunk, you need to look her up. She's got amazing other Praise books God. out there. Yeah. So how do you know that you're on firm fitting this oh. time? How I know I'm on firm footing. Uh, there's not a day that doesn't go by that I end the day 
in a place where I review, honestly, this is natural. I'm not in a program doing this. Better Health doesn't recommend this. <laughs> uh, but I end the day in a prayerful state and review how my food was that day um, and just really thanking the Holy Spirit. I feel like the Holy Spirit's walking alongside of me and whispering in my ear and uh, it's really taken. So I, I really feel good. The other thing is with the surgery, yeah. I had every excuse. I mean, I remember Phil saying, you sure you don't want an ice cream? You know, he's just <laughs> lovely, but not helpful in this topic right now. I said, no, I just want to keep going. Yeah. And it's, I've lost 30 pounds since I started this. I thought, yeah, I'm really excited, 20 some inches. And I expect a lot more now that this is resolving. But I'm not beating myself up. I'm in a pause space with the surgery recovery. But I know I'm on firm footing because I really would have gained all that weight back. I had an excuse. I was barely exercising and you know could eat whatever. People wouldn't care. And I didn't want to. Yeah. I like the way I feel. I like not having the cravings. And I like ending the day reviewing and seeing that I'm really living this now. Really knowing my body wants to have be peaceful. Mm -hmm. And it wants nutrition. Right. It doesn't want processed foods. Exactly. Like, yeah. like I told you, the Holy Spirit has said to me that those foods have nothing to do with you. They have nothing to do with you. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I mean, for somebody else, but not for you. Yahweh gave us fresh yes. things, you know, out of the fields, off the trees, and, and they're life giving. Yeah. I was at a meeting with Phil recently, and one of the women and I were talking because she had noticed I'd lost weight. And I told her I was doing anti-inflammatory. She said, you need to get this book, a juicing book on anti-inflammatory juicing. And now we're sitting in the evening drinking beet juice. You know, <laughs> I just, it's, it's a different, it's a different life. Yeah. I mean, it's really beautiful. Yeah. And it's good you're doing it together. Oh, yeah. 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 That, that's helpful. He's so, you know, he's <laughs> so supportive. Yeah. So... What, what are your words of wisdom for somebody that's going, that's in the, you know, struggling with this issue? Well, first of all, I believe 90% of us are struggling with it now that I've been talking to people. Yeah. So to acknowledge that you're not alone, this, like you're saying, mm -hmm. Most of us in our society have this issue. Mm -hmm. You may not have had it for 60 some years like I've had it, but you will have this issue, um, especially because now we got the cosmetic surgery, all those things that you're mm -hmm. seeing in the world. You're never gonna look at like these people um, in the media unless you've got skillions of dollars to do plastic surgery. And I don't even like the creepy look most of them have. <laughs> you know, it's not mm -hmm. what God gave us mm -hmm. to be. So. The first words of wisdom is acknowledging you're not alone. Yeah. We're in this. And it's not, you know, somebody said to me, your book's going to be great for women over 50. No, it's all of us. It's men, it's women, it's all ages. When I was going to Overeaters Anonymous, those uh, women that were anorexic and bulimic, they were in their 20s. I'm sorry, it's not women over 50s. The other thing is, if you see, another word of wisdom, if you see your child, um, starting to be put on the weight, you have a couple of things you could do there. One is, I mean, where are they getting the food? They're getting it from you, so let's raise some consciousness there. But also, I have a really good friend who said when her sons were gaining weight, like around, I don't know, 12 or 13, I don't have children, so I, I didn't witness this in my own life. But she said, instead of most parents will start shining the light on what are you doing what are you up to she just let it go and to see if it would just resolve itself which it did with athletics and they got taller and she was so proud of herself this friend of mine is an anorexic and she told me this story she said i didn't want to bring the light shining the light mm -hmm. on them mm -hmm. at, at that moment because i know you know from my story shining the light on me at three years old started Starts a pattern. Oh, yeah, terrible. Absolutely terrible. Yeah, you know, God bless my my family, but um, my parents. But that's what I'd say. Acknowledge you're not alone. I'd say do not give up. 
you know, there's lots of support groups, there's lots of programs. I really like Noom. I mean, I'll just say that because they give you a lot of education around why this is happening. Mm -hmm. So you don't feel like you're, because that's another part, the guilt. Yeah. Everybody else can be thin. What's wrong with me? I have had colleagues in financial services. Why can't they exercise? Why can't they, you know, really judging people that were overweight? And so I know, you know, I've heard it myself. They didn't necessarily talk, say it to me. Well, they said it to me, not thinking I, I was in that category, I guess, I don't know. But um, not, not to feel guilty around yeah. your issue. Yeah. Well, again, as you're listening and you're relating to this, and listen, the Lord says in his word that he's no respecter of persons. What he has done for Roseanne and for all the people in this book, he will do for you. So don't feel like, well, that's them. No, he can't do it for me. Oh, absolutely, he can. He says, call upon me and I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things you can't even dream of. Give us a call. We've got prayer partners that would love to pray with you. 505 345 4165. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back. Roseanne and I have been talking about um, the, bo the body image issue. And, you know, Roseanne, uh, like we were talking about, a lot of times people don't, they try to deal with the outside appearance. But, you know, what about triggers? You know, I mean, things that <clears throat> you may be doing so good, you're, you know, you're reaching your goals. And then something happens and it just triggers you and you're just like, oh, I gotta go have a carton of ice cream yeah. <laughs> you know, or, or something. I mean, doing something that you know is not in your best interest. I mean, it's such a tool of the enemy. Yes. How do you overcome those things? Well, first of all, it is emotional eating. Mm -hmm. So what do we do? And I know, I know a lot about this just from coaching in the workplace, helping mm -hmm. people with their emotional triggers related to their colleagues and all that. It's no different within yourself. Mm -hmm. Because if you're in an emotionally triggered state and you have this compulsivity around food and lack of exercise, it goes right together. Yeah. And so what you want to do, back it up and you see yourself either, I see I always say try to get out in front of it. So if you see yourself heading into the, the dysfunctional behavior, mm -hmm. and in our case it would be compulsive eating, what we're talking about. When you see yourself moving into that, can you stop and say, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, I feel this coming, what is going on right now? Yeah. And so I've had people in, you know, we're trying to change different behaviors, stop, and do something to distract themselves. So mm -hmm. if we're talking about eating, let me drink a, gla a big tall glass of water. If I still wanna do that thing, you know, I say you have to be very loving with yourself. It's that harsh voice that got us into this trouble in the first place, I'm right. sorry, the judgmental harsh <clears throat> voice. So um, let me do something to distract myself. How about a glass of water? How about if I go, I have a friend who um, will go, cause she's working on this issue. Uh, she'll go do some weeding in the garden quick. And if she still wants to eat, give her half an hour, she'll eat the thing. But if most of the time it distracts her enough. Mm -hmm. So it's, it is emotional eating. Um, so to do everything, now that's you're in the middle of it and we're trying to stop it. It's better if you could work on your emotional um, triggers in the first place. Right. So how do we do that? We get, become aware of what does trigger you. A lot of times it's the relationship you're in, something is said, you go mm -hmm. right for the snacks. Um, you know, other times it could be something you saw on TV that brings back a memory, you go right for the snacks. 
for the more you know about what triggers you, the better you can prevent the triggering, and then it won't it, then it yeah. won't happen. So there's an awareness that Completely. you have to come to then. I call it, we all, I call it, everybody calls it the stadium view. If you can become the observer of what you're about to do. Mm. Now I've been in um, such a good place with this inner voice talking me th through things now. So to me, that's been preventing 90% of the time the triggering. Yeah. But um, if you don't have that yet, can you just, what's going on, pull yourself out of it to see get the observer point of view before you're doing it. And if you do it, let's go all the way. You ate the piece of cake or whatever it is that's in there. Mm -hmm. And which by the way, I want to say something about that. In my entire life doing what I'm doing right now, I could never have foods that were tempting to me around me. So I would clear out the cupboards. I mean, I know there's probably many of our viewers that say yeah. if I'm dieting, clear out but I didn't want to do that to Phil. I feel like it's not his issue. Yeah. It's my issue. I need to be in a normal world and function in a peaceful body state and stop the battle with my body. I need to do all of that. Yeah. So this is, you know, this is the goal. So I didn't have him empty out the um, kitchen. So there's stuff in there that I would necessarily want to go after, but I'm not it's not there, the cravings aren't there, the voice is stopping me or whatever, the Holy Spirit's voice. So I would say, um, if you go all the way and you ate the cake or whatever it was you ate, the cookies, for you to just say, that's it, I did it. Holy Spirit, take this away, you know, Jesus, help me not do this again. Something, prayer, and whatever's gonna make you feel better in that moment, maybe go out for a walk after you've done it, laying on top of what you just did with guilt and shame just makes it worse. You want to clear it and forgive yourself and move on. And how about walking up to a mirror and looking in it and looking in your own eyes oh. and saying, I love you. Yes. Well, and I do have a ritual now in the shower where I'm just saying, I love my body. My body is healthy and whole, and it's coming to its perfect size. Yeah, yeah. And it's not just words now. After walking around my home with an oxygen tank for two months, I know what unhealthy is. Mm -hmm. You know, I would never wish that on anyone. However, having gone through it, I know what health and vitality is. So when I'm in the shower and I'm praising my body and feeling good in my own skin, it's not fake. You know, a lot of times they say, say affirmations, fake it till you make it and all this. This is really real for me. Yeah. Well, that's one reason I like the mirror idea is yes. because you're looking at what he's seeing. Yeah. I mean, it can't be denied. Yes. It's like this is... I mean, he knows you inside and out. Yes. But when you look into your own eyes and you see the light, yes. that's him. Yes, shining through. Yeah, and, and he wants us to love ourselves. Yes. And, and it's not talking about in love with yourself, but I mean, love who you are as his creation. Yes. Well, and I think about it, Linda, I was all over the charts with my body because I would do, you'll read more about, you know, the starving diets and the this and the that. So I had quite a range, just like my father, of sizes and appearances over the years. And when I was in my bikinis and looking great, I didn't feel it. No, no. Or I, and I couldn't stay there. I mean, there's a whole thing around going up and going back. I tell a wonderful story. There, were, I found a place in San Diego that I used to go to. Um, and if you went there and, you know, retreat, but it was for weight loss and health things. And so you'd go there and you were guaranteed, really, I'd lose 16 pounds being there two weeks. You're juicing, colonics, you know, just all that stuff, wheatgrass. Uh -huh. And so I started this journey. I did this probably for about six or seven years. I gained the weight, I, I, but I was happy that I knew I could go there and go get it off, come back up. You know what this did to my metabolism. I had no clue to how much I was damaging my body mm. doing this, but I would do this. Yeah. This was my 
way out. I was always looking for the way out that was not this way out, right. this way out, right? But I had many a time where I looked what you'd say very attractive, very, you know, very pretty, but I never saw it that way. It was always this layer of something else over me yeah. because I didn't have the strong, strong God connection to see the perfection in all that he creates. Amen. Amen. Well, um, I also, you just brought up the, uh, the Chosen a while ago. Yes. And that you're going to be get, you're going to be going to a convention. Oh, we're so excited. <clears throat> we're going, it's October 14th to the 16th in Dallas. Uh-huh. Uh, and for those of you who don't know the Chosen television show, you need to watch it. <laughs> Please look it up. It's now on some main networks and yeah. such. Um, but Phil and I, my husband and I, had been um, there for the feeding of the 5,000 in June of last year. And so we're going to, they call it Chosen Con, just like uh, Comic Con, but it's yeah. Chosen Con, <laughs> 1,500 people. It's sold out in about 15 minutes, which wow. thrills me to see how the world is is mm -hmm. uh, rising up. So we're going, maybe we'll come back on the show in a couple months and we'll tell you what happened there. We're so excited to be there with those people. I know my husband and I are, we're watching it again. Oh yes. <laughs> you know, the season two, I mean, th season three is not out yet, right? I don't think. Three is out. Is it out? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. maybe, maybe that's what we're on. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, and, and it's just so <sighs> uplifting. Um, and and I, I just know that the way that Yeshua is portrayed, is that is, has to be the way he was. I read, I've, I've read, read a book that was written a number of years ago from that perspective. And, um, in, of his life in the land, you know, and I thought this this is more real than what we've been taught. Oh yeah. Because we 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 didn't see him in his homeland, in his culture, his language, all of these things. And I love the way that the sense of humor. Oh. <laughs> and the apostles always vying for his attention. You know, it's just mm -hmm. so realistic. It's the way I know it was. Yeah. I just know it was. And if you see how Jesus is with all of them and Mary Magdalene, there is no judgment. Mm -mm. He sees who they are. And that's why when we're talking about all this stuff with our own shameful behaviors and all the people in the Broken Chapters book, Jesus doesn't see all that. No, no. And that's why, that's why we need that relationship. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, and then you and Phil, like you, you talked about, you're doing, you do these books. Yeah, there's our marker, latest one. Historic marker roadmaps. And this one is uh, one, of, one of the ones that's, I guess, is in there is El Rito. Yes. And, you know, Phil, we just were at Northern New Mexico College. The president of the college, Hector Balderas, <laughs> the new president, uh -huh. um, we met with him. And um, he's actually living, El Rito's campus is where the normal school was. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know about the normal school, but it was a... Um, what do you call it? People slept there. So it was, you know, academy for yeah. kids in New Mexico to come and get a really fine education. Well, Balteris, the new president, is living on the campus in that house. So we gave him one of the books. He was so excited because we dedicated that book uh -huh. to the El Rito campus. Oh, great. And what went on at the normal school. Nor uh, Phil had gone to school there. He didn't board there. It's a boarding school uh -huh. because he lived in El Rito. Oh, but he okay. went to school there and got such a fine education. <clears throat> but... Yeah, well, yeah. That's is, another hundred markers. We yeah. have three marker books. Wow. Women marked for history. If you love women's history, that one won the 2015 New Mexico Historic Preservation Award. Women marked for history. Oh wow! Yeah, I'm and, looking. Yeah, and looking then, at this, Bernalillo yeah. County, Catron County, Chavez, Cibola, all of them, Colfax. Yeah, all of these. Yes, and we need to. Excuse me. We need to know our history. Yes. We need to know um, what made this state the way it is. Oh. You know, the and the heritage uh, that that we have, and and the and actually the you know the godly heritage that he yes. desires to bring forth and to shine from this state yes. in these last days. There's so, so much here, Linda. 
You know, I moved from San Francisco in 2003 to Santa Fe mm -hmm. and uh, never looked back. I loved my time in California. I was raised on the East Coast, loved all that. This is where I was to be for these years. And I just love this state. Yeah. Uh, really, there's so much here. Yeah. I've, how many years have you been here? Since 03. So Since, what's that? Okay. 20 years now. Yeah. Wow. I was in San Francisco 25 years, so it's almost the same amount of time. But as you know, I had to come here to meet my husband. Yeah, I've, I've been here 35 years now. So wow. yeah, that's, yeah, it's amazing. It and goes so fast. Yeah, it, it does go fast. And, yeah. it, and you know, when you're in a place that becomes not just home, but it's a home in your heart. Really? You know, there's this, just this, this, the connection. You're, you're a New Mexican. Really? <laughs> yeah, grafted in, just like we're grafted into our Messiah. Yeah. Well, Roseanne, thank you so much oh. for coming and sharing about this. And uh, again, the two books, New Mexico Historic Marker Roadmaps, and how can they get hold of these? these we have a website now. It's called um, TravelingNewMexico.com. Oh, good. All of our books are on there. And then that one, Krista Dunk's book, uh -huh. The Broken Chapters, is on Amazon. Okay. So please and reach out. Also, just a reminder, as you're traveling around the state, when you see in the National Forest or along the road, the Smoky Bear sign. Yes. <laughs> that's, that's Phil and, and Roseanne Archuleta. They're, that their company produces those. It was their idea to do that. <laughs> so, um, yeah. and just say a prayer. Say, thank you, Lord, for Phil and Roseanne, and thank you for blessing them. Uh, and we just want to say to you today that we, we want to bless you. And again, if you have a prayer need, don't let the enemy whisper in your ear. Just tell him to shut up and give us a call. And 505-345-4165 is the number to call. And there will be some lovely person that's going to answer the phone. And you're going to feel the love of God immediately and they just want to pray with you. They are so full of His Spirit, and they just want to pour out of that to you today. So give us a call, and we want to thank you for all of your support for the, the ministry. It's uh, very important to us. Prayer support, financial support, and, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, if you, listening to this interview today, uh, you think, you know what, I've got a story to tell. And maybe you didn't realize that. You've got a testimony, and it's unique to you. Will you give us a call and say, hey, you know, I'd be interested in sharing my story on God Answers Prayer. We'd love to hear from you. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May He make His face to shine upon you. May He lift up His countenance upon you and give you his everlasting peace. Shalom, shalom.